Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He is a wonderful collaborator, a great ally, and a mayor of one of the world's great cities. Mayor Garcetti, my favorite mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a very good morning. Uh, I'm sure all of you were in here, so you didn't just see me on TV in a different outfit uh, announcing the progress that we are making with the fire. I'm sure some of you have been displaced and know that uh, you know, it's frustrating not to be in your home. My parents are out of their house too. Um, but this is one in which no mayor will ever overrule his fire commanders. And we're expecting some very strong winds tonight, um, some very low humidity tomorrow. So uh, if you do see a firefighter coming off the job, please thank him or her for the extraordinary work they're doing to protect all of us during this time. Thank you. Well, good morning, and it's great to be back on this campus where I started my education just uh, about 100 feet away. Uh, it took me seven years to get my UCLA degree, but it was elementary school, so it does take a little bit of longer. And I want to thank Chancellor Block for his introduction, welcoming us for this historic moment to Royce Hall, which we've spent so many amazing days in and nights in. The memories, if these walls could speak, for each one of us, as well as collectively, this city of angels are deep and profound. And I want to thank Pat Morrison, our distinguished guests that are here from academia, from tech and business, government, every sector, as well as our students who are the next great mothers and fathers of the next chapter of the internet. And I want to express my gratitude to this extraordinary institution, to UCLA, which did begin uh, my curiosity as a student. Uh, which brought together the team of visionaries uh, who brought together our planet. And 30 years ago, on the 20th anniversary of that stunning moment, when a message took its maiden voyage through cyberspace from Westwood to Palo Alto, a great man wrote a tribute in verse. And I understand he shared uh, a limerick with you earlier, but I'll share some other poetry that he said back then. We decided that the first node would be, we who are your hosts. And so today you're gathered here while UCLA boasts. That was from a poem titled Big, The Big Bang or The Birth of the ARPANET, part of a 1989 collection written by a group of UCLA teachers and researchers. And the poet was no less than our beloved professor, Leonard Kleinrock. I think I speak for everyone, Len, when I say, thank goodness you didn't quit computer science to become a poet. But <laughs> you are a talented poet and a brilliant scientist. And all kidding aside, I think there's another line of poetry which does, in many ways, fit this occasion well and refer to you and your fellow collaborators back when. We all know it. Some think that actually Robert Kennedy wrote it, but it comes from much further back. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. Those words apply to Len Kleinrock and his fellow founding fathers of the internet. It's certainly the spirit that is imbued throughout the history of this city, Los Angeles, a city that embodies creativity and innovation, a city strengthened by the most diverse communities in human history, a place that looks at the peaks yet unconquered and asks how we can climb them today. You see, our city of angels is driven by values that are at the heart of our identity, of freedom, of belonging, and of the future. This is the Los Angeles that Professor Kleinrock found when he came like so many great minds here in the 1960s. A place that they maybe had seen in movies or on television, but that was already so much more than just a set. It was a gro growing global hub, full of the freedom that they needed to test ideas, that embraced failing, picking yourself up and trying again until you ultimately succeed. A city that gives native born and migrants alike a strong sense of belonging, which means that someone like Len, a child of Jewish immigrants who grew up in Washington Heights in New York, a young man of little means but of a wealth of drive and curiosity for scientific discovery, that he could find the fertile ground and the opportunity to thrive and grow right here. And a city where we have always believed that the future isn't some distant point on the horizon. It's happening now, all around us, always when we live in Los Angeles. That city, that Los Angeles, where packet switching and the infant internet took its first steps. But let's rewind the clock for a moment to where we were 50 years ago. Globally, 
Our nation was at war overseas in Vietnam with a draft, a draft that drove protests from coast to coast. Domestically, our nation was split, going through strife unseen in a hundred years. Assassinations the year before of Bobby Kennedy and of Martin Luther King Jr. We could see on our new color televisions the pictures of unrest and riots. Our families were lifted up that year by the magic of Hollywood, as always, with landmarks like the original True Grit, Midnight Cowboy, stirring our imaginations. Locally, we were experiencing an aerospace boom and cars built in our own backyard as we played our part in getting the first man on the moon. Here in our air, our commuters were choking on smog, yet we blissfully cruised around on freeways in the days when it truly was 20 minutes to anywhere in Los Angeles, <laughs> not just from the 405 to here, if you're lucky. <laughs> and even so, that age of peril brought extraordinary promise. Reminders of what we achieve when we set aside our differences and embrace the power of possibilities. That same year, 1969, just weeks before login, that first message was truncated and LO sent through the ARPANET. An LA educated astronaut from some other university across town, lifted to the heavens by a rocket partially built here in the San Fernando Valley, took one small step on the surface of the moon. But beyond that earth-shattering achievement were the same forces that equipped teams at UCLA and Stanford and elsewhere to develop and use the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, which we know as ARPANET. An example of what happens when government and academia and the private sector work together to address common human needs. I think that's a part of the story that goes too often untold and one that we need to restate that it was publicly funded research and revolutionary science that drove the moonshot and spurred the work that is happening in Professor Kleinrock's lab, uh, sorry, that was happening in Professor Kleinrock's lab. It started with our government's primary concern to protect our life, to keep people safe. In the worst case scenario, how would we find each other and communicate with each other after a nuclear war? So we built the network and we put our best minds to answer that life or death challenge. And we realized each year, as thankfully nuclear disaster was never realized, that a system designed to find each other at our worst moment of war could also connect us at the most hopeful moments in times of peace. Simply put, in the process of finding a way to live, we found a way to connect. Not only did we connect researcher to researcher, we laid out our ability to connect everything. The children of that moment, our smartphones now, our rideshare apps, video messaging with our families, the companies, the Ubers, Lyfts, Googles, and Apples that grew and prospered as a result of that moment. All of it changed the world, the economy, the society that we live in, and the very essence of who we are. This cooperation between government and businesses and universities, that may sound exceptional, that may sound like a relic of a different time, but as we reflect now 50 years later, as we gather not just to mark history, but to ask how will we make history, we have to address the same challenges in new manifestations today. You see, when a city like LA helps build out a fiber network, it leads to more innovations and more companies bringing more jobs. This county now has more tech jobs than any county in America, including Santa Clara County up north, New York, Boston. When we set up centers of innovation like LA Clean Tech Incubator to confront climate change and bring green businesses here, when we've grown 35,000 new green jobs as a result of that government and private sector and university collaboration, nearly one in 100 Angelinos just in the last seven years working in a clean tech sector, 60% of the remaining coal jobs left in America as we confront climate change, we see that the challenges of 50 years ago very much mirror the opportunities of today. What will that great new chapter in human history look like and how will we be its authors, just as Len and his cohort have been as well? So as we look back today on what we created a half century ago, as we consider all that has happened since, let's celebrate and appreciate not only the specifics of that success, but the necessity of that model. Let us understand how we can apply that same approach to present day, because if the greatest threat in the 1960s to human civilization was nuclear war. The greatest threat to our planet in 2019 is climate change. We can't stop climate change anymore from happening. It's too late. 
but we can mitigate it enough to preserve life if we make the 2020s a decade of action, the climate decade. And regardless of who is in the White House, it falls on us at the local level and a coalition across this nation, across the world of cities and universities and businesses. We have a shared need for clean energy, clean air and clean water. There's another vital part of the story today. We look back at 1969 when we took that giant leap forward on the moon. We did it here on Earth and here at UCLA too. In turn, we deepened human connection in a way that strengthened all of humanity. We've gone from that original two-letter message to emails and Instagram photos to sharing music online and finding and falling in love with someone we met on an app. We've gone from what happened on this campus a half century ago to how we can deploy technology to face our biggest challenges and look at how our city has grown as a result. We are now the third largest metropolitan economy in the world after Tokyo and New York and we're virtually the same size as New York. The number one digital city in America, three years running, but an important physical hub of the internet, of hardware, software, and content creation. A city that uses tech to lift people's lives up how we build our water and power systems, how we pave our streets, how we test autonomous vehicles, create the next generation of smart manufacturing, provide telemedicine in underserved area where faster care can be the difference between life and death. And we are blessed in this city to still have the magical set of ingredients. In fact, they're all around you, on your left and on your right and in front of you and behind you. Our city reflects the world with its great diversity, but it also is an incarnation of our greatest promise. Our topography, our weather, our financial and human capital, our creativity are unmatched. So while it might, see, might seem contradictory as we brag about our city, we actually still live too with a humility and an openness and a lack of hierarchy that lets the next Len Kleinrock come to Los Angeles or be born in Los Angeles and find her brilliance as well. In many ways, we're structured just like the internet. Plug in, connect, and find your future and your fate right here. And if this city is like the internet, then its people are like the internet's founding fathers. We stand on their shoulders and we see what is around us and we don't ask why. We see something tomorrow and ask why not. So with that, we have to ask those fundamental questions. What technology do we need today? What connection do we yearn for and how can we better enable it? And we have to understand what the original ARPA team certainly knew, that the broader question isn't just what we invent, it's about who has that technology and how we use it. That's what the next generation of Los Angeles innovation looks like, of UCLA brilliance will produce when we use that creativity to build a better city and a better world around us. And so I know that Los Angeles will be together 50 years from now, here on this very campus, celebrating the next milestone, the way that we survived as that tenacious, creative, group of organisms called human beings in the most beautiful spot on this God-given earth. And so with that, on behalf of four million grateful Angelinos, part of a 19 million Southern California population, I wanna honor the man who has made this possible, the son of Washington Heights, whose story is only possible in some ways in Los Angeles and in America, a child of immigrants who fled war and persecution and hopelessness in Eastern Europe to pave a path of opportunity here in the United States. The pioneer whose love of science started when he built a radio from his father's razor blade at age six and led him all the way to UCLA's faculty. A professor who would go on to win the National Medal of Science and who fundamentally altered our lives, how we connect and how we communicate. I've only given this, the key of the city, some mayors give it to anybody who visits, I've only done it three times in my seven years as your mayor, including to Vin Scully and to the late, great Stan Lee. But I wanna surprise Len, I don't think he knew this, but I, I of course have a proclamation for him here, but I also want to ask him to come forward to present the key to our city, to an amazing Angelino and the founding father of the internet, Professor Leonard Kleinrock. Thank you all so much. Surprise for you. Here, come on out here. Come on this way. Chancellor,